Do you remember what your life was like at 14 years old? You went to secondary school, maybe you played a sport, read a lot of books, and ate whatever you wanted. It was fun and predictably normal. When we were 14, we did all the same things, and life seemed normal too. But then, one day in July 2012, after walking home from school, we arrived to find a crisp white paper taped to our front door. Bold red ink scarred the sheet. For a long moment, there was a suffocating silence. We knew exactly what this piece of paper meant. But we ran upstairs and plugged in our headphones to try to forget about it. I pulled my sleeping bag to the side and bundled up. I really didn't want to face it, but behind the loud music and bedsheets, I was afraid of what was about to happen. Two months after turning 14, our family was evicted from our home and became homeless. As our parents scheduled a nonprofit to haul away our furniture, we began to comprehend that our small apartment was no longer our home. For the next year, we slept in rigid army-style cots at shelters and lived out of a local motel room. We felt like we were living a double life, attending school like normal, getting elected by our peers into leadership positions, volunteering in a local hospital, holding jobs in our community, and excelling in our classes. The only thing was none of our peers knew of our situation, and homelessness became our best-kept secret. Throughout this experience, fear dominated our thoughts. What would people think of us if they found out we had no mailing address? How many friends would we lose? How embarrassed would we feel showing up to school every day with our private lives put on public display? We were more than just afraid. We were terrified. Those who are homeless are constructed as a social group. Worldwide, their identity is created and then reinforced by people with more money, more power, and more influence. These statements by the United Nations could not have felt more true. Sometimes it felt emotionally overwhelming, and we needed to accept others' help. In the shelters we stayed in, we were helped by loving volunteers who treated us normally despite our far-from-normal circumstances. In addition, we found that even in this situation, we still had our family, a path towards an education, and a fire pushing us for a better life. We found that inspiration pulls us forward. It expands our capacity to believe what is possible for ourselves and allows us to overcome fears that might otherwise hold us back. By facing our fears head first, we've assembled a toolkit of five principles that have allowed us to reach higher than we ever could have imagined before, from homeless to Silicon Valley. And today, we want to share that with you. And now today, we've interned at Apple, Tesla, and Microsoft, and are the only two students in our class of 7,500 students at UC Berkeley, double majoring in engineering and business, and have won over $100,000 in private scholarships. So the first principle is the importance of creating an inspiring vision. Being in a dark place that held no promise forced us to look outside of our situation for inspiration. We turned to the internet as a tool to allow us to discover another world, one that showed us where we could be if we committed to learning what was needed to excel in life. YouTube gave us access to virtual mentors, people like Steve Jobs and Oprah Winfrey, whose video interviews gave us insights into the thought patterns of some of the world's most successful visionaries. We were inspired by their hard work and fearless execution. This inspiration pulled us forward to overcome and achieve more than we ever could have imagined before. And one of the ways that we've applied this today is recently in getting internships at Apple, as you can see on the screen behind me. So coming into college, we had no connections in Silicon Valley, but we were inspired by Apple and how their products showed us an application of an at the time very mysterious field called engineering. So we decided we wanted to work there, but um, still had no way to get there. Uh, today, Mark has interned at Apple last year, and I'll be interning there this summer. And the inspiring vision was critical in helping us overcome the many challenges it took to get there. But in creating and pursuing this inspiring vision, we also think it's important to not deify anyone. During my internship, I had the opportunity to meet Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple. Meeting him was this profound experience that humanized someone who I admired, 
while simultaneously expanding my belief of what was possible for myself. I thought that in one moment in time, we were in the same place. So I'm really not all that different from someone running one of the most successful companies in the world. That was an important realization that came from a shift in mindset. We also learned the importance of cultivating our minds. So we couldn't control our external situations at the time, but we became hyper aware of the one of the few things we did have influence over, our inner worlds. We noticed that dwelling on a feeling of lack does not make you feel good, but focusing on things that inspire and uplift you made us feel great. We began strictly filtering what entered our minds, using our feelings to filter what we chose to believe, and surrounding ourselves with people who pushed us to be better. In reality, this meant paying attention to the lyrics of the songs we were listening to, and not listening to the songs with harmful lyrics, and cutting off friendships with people who weren't on our same track. Over time, this helped us become better at achieving our goals. And one way we're applying this today is by studying abroad here in Dublin. Um, so even though finding a study abroad program that would allow us to complete both engineering and business majors on time, still pursue summer internships and be financially feasible was quite the challenge. We wanted to see the world through others' eyes, make international friendships and become more culturally aware. And those far outweighed the costs. The third principle is the importance of creating your own luck. A lot of people that we've talked to think that luck plays a role in who's successful and who isn't, and they wait for that lucky moment to happen to them. But we don't believe in luck. You are more powerful than probabilities, and I can prove it. Andrew, what does 0.01% mean to you? I don't know, Mark. What does it mean? Let me explain with a story. So, in our final year of high school, we were not invited to apply to a selective national scholarship. We actually only found out about it because we overheard some of our peers asking our teachers for recommendations. But once we heard about this, we knew we at least deserved to be considered. So we went to our counselor and asked for more information. After she reluctantly gave us that information, we worked into the night to craft a compelling 20-page scholarship application with essays, teacher recommendations, and everything like that. Over time, we moved through the local, regional, and national levels of this competition, and these two students who hadn't been referred to the scholarship had progressed farther than any student in their school had in the past. In the end, I won the top $50,000 scholarship given to one out of 10,000 applicants, or 0.01 percent, and Andrew also won a scholarship worth several thousand dollars. A focus on service has been constant in our lives, allowing us to gain access to mentors and scholarships beyond our expectations. But as you can imagine, we didn't truly understand the impact of service until we were forced to be on the receiving end. We were so grateful to the volunteers who served us, without ever asking for anything in return, that when we got to college, we focused our extracurricular activities on service. This propelled us to create programs that other people could benefit from. Key experiences that stood out to Apple, Microsoft, and various scholarship donors. So our two main extracurriculars in college are exclusively service-oriented. The first is the Momentum Speaker Series, which is a student speaker series we created in the College of Engineering at UC Berkeley to help students gain momentum in their career searches through advice from their peers. Kind of similar to TED events like this. And the second, the second venture is the Tech Twins, a YouTube channel we started to help our peers break into the tech industry. And in both cases, we're sharing what we're passionate about and have been successful in with others in hopes of、um, spreading that knowledge.、Yeah. Fifth, respectful persistence. It can be easy to give up in the face of adversity, to hit the snooze button when faced with severe challenges. You can imagine how easy it could have been for us to give up when we were so close to having nothing and so far away from our goals. But we encourage you to adopt a different mindset. With nothing to lose, we had everything to gain by being fearless. So, to help illustrate this point of persistence, I'll share another story. How, as 14-year-olds, would we obtain smartphones, another tool for unlocking our worlds,、um, when we had to fully pay for them ourselves? What we did was we got two jobs after sending countless emails and phone calls that, to companies that didn't respond. The first was as a math tutor at Kumon, and in Los Angeles, public transportation is heavily stigmatized. But we took the bus to work every day, and it turned out there was actually only one job opening, so we split it, each going in for half of the hours, until more hours opened up. 
The second job was as a food server and cashier at our high school cafeteria. But it all paid off in December 2013 when we bought our first phones in full and have been, we've been paying the monthly payments ever since. Here's a post that I made on Facebook when that glorious day finally came. Looking back on this experience, we now realize that being homeless actually taught us valuable life lessons that we hope will benefit you as you encounter challenges in your future. You can choose to live your life governed by fear of what other people will say, of being different, or um, in our case, of our past, or you can choose otherwise. Through experiencing homelessness, we've discovered that even in the most challenging circumstances, you can always choose to disregard fear, and that each time you do, you become more free to use your gifts and talents to make the world better. We also want to challenge your perspective on homelessness. On the screen behind me are some of the most famous people in the world, and hopefully you recognize some of them. Um, what you might not know about them, though, is that at some point, each of these individuals were homeless. But they didn't let this title define themselves or their futures. But the important thing is, these aren't just the stories of us and a few people we've displayed on these screens. We all have fears that generate excuses that hold us back from achieving more and making a bigger impact. Imagine what could happen if all of us refused to allow fear to influence our decisions. How much more of ourselves could we unlock to enjoy and be of service to this world? How much more human potential would be unlocked so that global issues would no longer exist? If all of this were to happen, what would the world look like? We want to ask you, what could your life look like?